this is one of the largest consultations that we've ever seen from the between the NHS and a wider public asking a question what do you really want to see from mental health services Twenty thousand people responding in a very short period of time and giving us some very clear priorities one of our key themes is around access and people told us loud and clear that they want to get access to evidence-based treatment. What we're proposing is a significant expansion of those nice evidence-based tr treatments that should be available to as many people as possible over the course of the next five years. The fact that this place is on the high street and it doesn't say we are here for people with mental illness, it's not emblazoned across the front of the shop that makes a huge difference. One of the central themes of this report is the idea of integration of our physical health and our mental health, regardless of whether we're starting with a physical health problem or with a mental health problem. And for example, one of the things we've been looking at is the idea of better access for people with severe mental illness to physical health treatment, including issues like smoking cessation programmes. And equally, we've discovered that people with long-term physical health conditions, such as diabetes, can really improve if they get access to better psychological therapies. My diabetes was poor. We know from the research that's been done, people with diabetes are twice as likely to suffer from depression as people who don't have diabetes. And conversely, people who have depression are more likely to develop diabetes than people who don't have depression. Mental health crises don't happen between 9 and 5, Monday to Friday, and sadly for far too many people they find themselves in a police cell because there isn't the availability of health-based support. Hi, it's Jason at the First Response Service. We want to see crisis care available 365 days a year, 7 days a week, 24 hours a day. That'll be today. I'll try to get somebody out in the next hour or so. So that when somebody is at that worst possible point, they can get speedy access to the right kind of help and support they need. And are you on any medication at the moment? Yeah, I'm taking Sertraline. One of the great strengths about mental health services is when people with their own experience, families and professionals work together towards a common aim. And what we want to do is put that idea of co-production right at the heart of all aspects of mental health service delivery. That means more transparency, better outcomes and more personalisation for the individuals. If this place wasn't here, then I probably wouldn't be around at all. I don't think. The evidence that the cafe works is based on a recognised reduction in A&E attendance for mental health crisis and a 33% reduction in acute hospital admission for mental health crisis. That equates to a cost saving of £500,000 a year. The data just shows how effective it is. Reports in the past haven't really focused on mental health prevention. This is the first time that prevention is right at the heart of a major policy document about mental health. Hello there. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Good, good. Well, I'm just going to take your blood pressure. Right. Patients who have severe mental illness will die possibly up to 20 years earlier than um, somebody without a mental health diagnosis. That might squeeze right. a little bit. It doesn't matter. It's a huge problem. We know it's a huge problem. So what we're trying to do is bridge that gap so that their physical health gets as much attention as their mental health. It's absolutely fine. That's everything. Right, so thank, thank you. Last year with those patients who were on our inpatient wards who were picked up through this national performance target, which is otherwise known as the sequin, every single patient almost 97% got all the relevant screening and received interventions as appropriate to which ones were flagged up.
Running right the way through this report is a relentless focus on inequalities. There are far too many parts of our society who get a raw deal uh, for their own mental health. People from particular black and ethnic minority communities, uh, LGBT communities, older people and younger people often don't get the right kind of help and support they need. So we've hardwired the idea of a particular focus on inequalities, including better transparency of information and better training and support for professionals to make sure that they're able to produce and create uh, responsive services. This report uh, clearly costs out the additional investment required to provide the kind of service that I think everybody wants to see for people with mental health problems. Um, and I think that comes to come from two sources. It has to come in it partly from the spending review, but secondly, we've also been able to show that savings within the NHS can provide a better access to support for people with mental health problems. There is a clear roadmap that says this is the direction of travel we need to go in in order to be able to change the experience of people with mental health problems of NHS mental health services. Today is the day when that work starts for real, in delivering and implementing those ambitions. People with mental health problems deserve that support now.